SpaceX's Falcon 9 has been the leader of reusable spaceflight for almost a decade now, but soon Blue Origin and their new Glenn rockets are bringing the competition. New Glenn is mere weeks away from its inaugural launch, so to celebrate that, I made this video where you will learn all you need to know about New Glenn and Blue Origin. We'll have a look at New Glenn itself, the engines, Blue Origin's moon lander and a potential reusable second stage. So yeah, let's dive right in. New Glenn is Blue Origin's first orbital class rocket, and just like Falcon 9, its first stage will have the ability to land on a drone ship in the sea. It'll be able to be reused up to 25 times, which is very important for decreasing launch cost and increasing launch cadence. It will however be significantly taller than the Falcon, standing at 98 meters or 322 feet tall, with a diameter of 7 meters or 23 feet, making it the fourth largest rocket to ever fly. This two-stage rocket is officially classified as a heavy lift launch vehicle, being capable of pushing up to 45 tons into low Earth orbit, rivaling Falcon Heavy's 50 tons, and this payload capacity will be very important for something I'll explain in just a bit. It has been assigned Space Launch Complex 36 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida, where it might launch just weeks after the publishing of this video, and in the future it will also launch from Pad 9 at Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. At the moment, New Glenn has a singular landing platform, a drone ship named Jacqueline, but as New Glenn launch cadence grows, so will their drone ship fleet. Now unlike SpaceX, Blue Origin actually names its boosters, with the booster for the first flight getting the name So You're Telling Me There's a Chance, referring to the possibility of it being the first orbital class booster to successfully land on its debut flight. New Glenn's first stage uses liquid oxygen and liquid methane and is powered by 7 BE4 engines and the second stage uses liquid oxygen together with liquid hydrogen powered by 2 BE3U engines. I will explain these engines in more detail in just a minute. After stage separation, the first stage will be controlled using fins on the interstage, which according to Blue Origin CEO Dave Limp, generate an aerodynamic force roughly equal to the weight of a Boeing 737. These fins use the same principle as the grid fins on, for example, Falcon or Starship, but they look very different. And after maneuvering toward its landing site, it will land on a drone ship using six landing legs. Now, Blue Origin is already pretty experienced when it comes to reusable rockets, because their other suborbital rocket, New Shepard, also has a first stage that can propulsively land. But before you start talking about their other rockets, let's first talk about a potential reusable second stage. Project Clipper, also known as Project Jarvis, is a very secretive project to develop a reusable second stage for New Glenn, which would make New Glenn 100% reusable. Recently a patent has been released showcasing one of their ideas, which is similar to what Stokespace is doing, with a single turbopump assembly powering a bunch of thrust chambers surrounding a heat shield, forming a very truncated aerospike. The heat shield is actively cooled by liquid hydrogen, which changes into a gas when it absorbs heat. A small amount of the gaseous hydrogen powers the turbine that drives the engine's turbo pumps, while the rest is fully burned for thrust in the main combustion chamber together with liquid oxygen. The gas that powers the turbine is then expelled through these holes to create an extra protective layer over the heat shield, and it is pretty much just an expander bleed cycle implemented with an actively cooled heat shield, and I have a whole separate and way more in-depth video on this idea, which you can check out on my channel. Now let's get on to the engines. There are three main engines that will be of importance here, starting off with the BE3U. The BE3U is a vacuum optimized open expander cycle engine running Hydrolux propellants. This works pretty much the same as what I explained about Project Jarvis slash Clipper, except for that the liquid hydrogen doesn't flow past a heat shield in this case, but rather it flows past the walls of a nozzle to cool the engine, considering that in this case the second stage won't be reused. Two of these engines are used on the second stage of New Glenn and have recently been static fired as flight hardware. In case of Project Jarvis slash Clipper, the turbo pump assemblies of the BE3U would be used for the actively cooled heat shield expander bleed cycle stuff, and the big nozzle extensions wouldn't be there. Next up we have the BE4, seven of which power New Glenn's first stage, each of them producing a whopping two and a half thousand kilonewtons of thrust. The BE-4 runs on liquid oxygen and liquid methane and uses a single shaft oxygen rich stage combustion cycle. This cycle uses a pre-burner, which is essentially a smaller rocket engine, to power the turbine that drives the turbo pumps. A full flow of liquid oxygen enters the pre-burner where it partially combusts together with a small amount of methane. 
The low fuel to oxidizer ratio in the pre-burner generates an oxygen rich exhaust which powers the turbine. After it powers the turbine it goes into the combustion chamber and fully combusts together with liquid methane. Now not only does the PE4 power New Glenn, but it is also employed on the first stage of United Launch Alliance's Falcon, having made its in-flight debut on January 8th, 2024. And lastly, we have the BE-7, another Hydrolox expander cycle engine producing 44 kN of thrust. This engine is currently under development, but it is intended to be used on Blue Moon. What? Blue Moon? Yes! Blue Origin is building a moon lander! In May 2023, NASA contracted Blue Origin to land humans on the surface of the moon for the Artemis 5 mission, and the lander to do that is called Blue Moon. It is intended to carry 4 astronauts to the lunar surface for up to 30 days at a time and it also has a planned cargo variant being able to carry a massive 20 tons to the lunar surface in a fully reusable configuration. Development is led by Blue Origin but it is being worked on by several other companies including Lockheed Martin, Boeing and Astrobotic together with a few more and like I said previously these landers are going to be powered by the BE-7. It will have a total mass of 45 tons, which is the exact payload mass limit for New Glenn. So yeah, fits like a glove. If all goes well, the first uncrewed demo landing will take place sometime in 2028, and the crewed Artemis landing will happen around 2030. New Glenn already has quite a few launches scheduled, so here are some of them, just to name a few. First up we obviously have its maiden flight, which is happening no earlier than December 2024, but don't be surprised if it slips to 2025. It will carry a prototype of their Blue Ring space platform and the first stage will attempt landing on drone ship Jacqueline. Then, no earlier than 2025, they'll attempt two Pathfinder missions, which will be validation flights for a bunch of Blue Moon tech, including life support hardware, their BE-7 engine, flight avionics and more. These missions will both have lunar orbit as its final destination. Then the one I am most excited about, the Escape and Plasma Acceleration and Dynamics Explorers, or Escapade. This launch contains two spacecraft that will head to Mars to study its magnetosphere and how solar wind contributed to the loss of most of the planet's atmosphere. This mission is scheduled to take place no earlier than Spring 2025. Then over the course of a few years, we have dozens of Project Kuiper missions, and Project Kuiper is basically a mega constellation of satellites providing global internet, kind of similar to Starlink. And lastly, we have the two lunar landing demos, both crewed and uncrewed. These are expected to take place no earlier than 2028 and 2030 respectively. Lastly, let's talk about Blue Origin's other rocket, New Shepard. New Shepard is Blue Origin's first proper rocket, flying on a suborbital trajectory with an apogee of roughly 105 kilometers, just above the carbon line. This 19 meter high rocket has a reusable first stage and a crew rated capsule, having already carried 50 people into space. Those people include Blue Origin founder Jeff Bezos, Laura Shepard, who is the granddaughter of Alan Shepard, whom the rocket was named after, Kobe Cotton of Dude Perfect, and several Blue Origin or NASA employees. It is powered by the BE-3PM, which is a Hydrolox combustion tap of cycle engine, which means that a small amount of gas from the main combustion chamber is tapped away to power the turbine and turbo pumps. So yeah, that was everything you needed to know about Blue Origin, New Glenn, and even New Shepard. I quickly want to say a big thank you to my first ever channel member, Ryan Reiklin, and if you want to become a member too, you can do that right here. You will get some awesome exclusive perks, and I'm sure you won't regret it. Also, a massive thank you for getting the channel to 2000 subscribers. That is a massive number and I can't wait for the channel to grow even more. Quick reminder that I have a Discord server where you can chat with me and over 200 other space fanatics. And if you learned something new, please like this video and consider subscribing to the channel. And I hope to see you in the next video.